How much would it would a woodchuck choke if a woodchuck could choke would it? I think it went something like this. For most runners, this kingdom is one of the hardest in the run. It's long, heavily based on movement and includes a lot of precise tricks and strats. So let's find out how you can improve here. I'm Danza and this is Change of Pace for Wooded Kingdom. It's climbing out of the trenches, reaching for higher heights. Chasing me along, all I want is you, my will was chasing time. Well, I am the boss, I am the dawn, I am the one they call. I ain't got much to explain, no. I ain't got much to explain, no. But then I was running for bangles. I was still minimum wage, though. If you haven't watched the introduction video, make sure to check it out to understand how this series works. As a quick summary, there will be different strats for different skill levels. The lower ones will be the base for the higher ones. If you're feeling confident though that you already know the strats for a pace, feel free to check the timestamps to find the skill level that fits you best. Now, let's get moving. I'm just a kid with a glimmer of hope. I'm just a kid with a kid and potential to glow. Uh. We begin with strats I recommend for a target SOB of 103 flat, which you should aim for with a PB of around 104 or 105. Immediately after entering Wooded, there is a strat which might be new to you. This strat helps you get the full time save out of the fast bunny and rock movement by grabbing the rock at maximum speed. After the final cutscene, do 5 roll boosts and keep holding Y or X. Stop rolling and you should grab the rock right when your final roll ends. You should have the maximum speed and now you should maintain it by immediately jumping and aiming towards this spot here. Catching the bunny can be quite tricky. If you go too far right, it will move the wrong way. So make sure to force it towards the right where you can catch it around here. Jump again, now towards the other rock. When you're this far away, throw the rock you're holding. Once again, keep pressing X or Y, so you instantly grab the other rock. If you do everything correctly, the first rock should break the second one and spawn the moon. The trick as a whole is quite complex and mastering it takes a while. When practicing it, try to get used to the right angles and remember to always keep as much momentum as possible. That will actually make catching the bunny and the rock easier. Collect both moons, then roll towards the shop. If you're short on coins, you can roll through these two bushes. It makes sense to check your coin count from time to time, so you're prepared to grab some backup coins if necessary. This bush in the beginning also contains one and if you're really short on cash, you can even grab these two on top of the tree. To make it easier though, always try to leave lake with at least 98 coins. Now purchase the moon. For better mashing and menuing, make sure to also check out the special episode that we recently released on that topic. Do a spin pound and two quick roll boosts. Triple jump on the peak of this hill. Make your way to the top like this. Double jump, dive and roll boost three times. Roll cancel around the corner and try to keep your momentum. Triple jump again, cap dive and dive. Try to land close to the edge, then backflip, cap dive and bounce while holding neutral. Cap throw towards the nut, dive and home in to hit the nut. Alright, it's time for a nut clip. This trick might look easy at first, but it can take a long time to be consistent at. This also applies to the other parts that accompany it. Nut clip saves around 20 seconds and therefore is the moon clip that saves by far the most time in this category. And even if you fail it, you can still go for a fast backup route. So learning it now is really worth it, even if it also might kill a run of yours from time to time. Moon clips work by timing a cap throw right before the moon cutscene while being upside down. The moon cutscene will tilt Mario back to normal and in the process ignore nearby collision. So if you're close enough to the wall, you will end up out of bounds. Alright, that's the theory, now it's time to do it. Hit the nut twice so you can break it with your next jump. Stand below it and face perpendicular to the wall towards the camera. Now we are going to do two backflips and one cap throw. Note that the clip will be much harder if you don't hold towards the wall. So always remember to do that. But how do we time it so we are in the right position and get the cap throw at the right moment? You probably already know the answer. The nut clip rhythm is quite infamous in the community and goes like this. <laughs> Tischl even made a beat using that rhythm, which is very useful to get used to the right timings. Just keep playing it during practice until you feel confident in your timings. The timing is not frame perfect, but still quite precise. To get good at it, keep analyzing your attempts and figure out what you mistimed. 
If you get the cap throw before the moon cutscene but you don't clip, most of the time that means you did something too early, like the backflip or the cap throw. If you keep rushing the inputs, one tip is to make sure to go so slow on them that you only miss not clip by being too slow, never by being too fast. Also, practicing it is quite annoying since you have to load a new file for every attempt. Unfortunately, that's just the beginning of understanding nut clip, as now we have to talk about the out of bounds movement. After the moon, cap throw and dive towards here. This part can be quite awkward since it's mostly blind. That's just another part you have to get used to. Cap throw and dive again onto this spot out of bounds. We are going to learn about Jorani bounces now. There's not much to it. When you're close to a wall, you can throw Cappy and instantly move into him to get a super fast bounce. This is faster than a regular cap dive and also very useful as a backup in some scenarios. For this Jorani bounce, don't stand too close to the wall. Backflip, hold towards the wall, cap throw at the peak and immediately dive. For Shirana bounces, it's important to get a feeling for the right distance to the ball. But it's a tech that's totally worth learning. It's satisfying and you will need it sooner or later anyways. Also, the only real alternative for this part is a backflip and a delayed cap dive, which is also quite weird to do. So I recommend just learning the more advanced tech. Wall slide a bit until you're low enough, then wall jump, cap throw and quickly dive into the hole in the wall. If you're comfortable with it, you don't need to wait, you can also just really quickly wall jump and dive as soon as possible. Once you land, center the camera and it will be in this position. You have to deal with Mario's shadow from now on. Position yourself in this area to be able to collect the moon. Now, next part is both precise and weird to do. What we're trying to do is move to the edge of this block, then wall jump at the very top of it. That way we can grab the moon while staying out of bounds. The fastest way to do that is just getting a feeling for how close you are to the edge, then taking a step forward and swinging the left stick back so you start wall sliding. Then you just jump. The difficult part is that you basically have to anticipate both the stick flick and the wall jump. If you flick back too late, you will fall down. And the wall jump has to be as early as possible, otherwise you will miss the moon. It's a lot about getting a feeling for it, so make sure to be confident on the timings. There is another method that's more visual based and can be very helpful. It takes more time though. After landing in the hole, turn the camera all the way upwards so you can use the surface of the rock as a visual cue. Position Mario here. Now this small light part is a great indicator for when to flick the stick and wall jump. After getting the moon, fall just a little bit, then cap throw and dive towards the right. Make sure to get maximum height from the cap bounce, then stall against the rock wall. Wall jump, cap throw and dive back in bounce. If you feel like you're too low to make it, dive towards the rock wall. The floor is lower there and you can also bonk into the wall to gain some extra height. Before we go further, let's take a step back again and quickly look at the backup route in case you miss nut clip. It's commonly called the intermediate route and it's more similar to the nut clip route than the beginner one. After the tunnel nut, dive back and roll boost once. Jump, cap dive, dive, jump, cap throw and dive again. Roll towards the uproot and roll cancel when you're in front of it. Capture it and climb the tree. After the moon, uncapture and dive towards the left of this tree. Roll boost once and triple jump. Cap dive and dive towards the other side. During this jump, the game has a lot of frame drops, so be aware of that and try to space out the inputs so all of them go through. Now, once again, do one roll boost followed by a triple jump. Right above the vines, there is a small spot where you can stand on. Wall slide here and you should land on it. Backflip, cap dive to the right, wall jump and make your way to the top. Sometimes the weird collision of the tiny spot doesn't give you your cap dive back. Unfortunately, there is not much you can do about that, but it's something to be aware of. After you land on top, the route is the same like the nut clip route. Next, we're gonna run up the ramp. I'm an absolute expert on that. I'm one of the best at running up the ramp. I've never ever failed to run up the ramp. Everyone is always asking me for advice on running up the ramp. So I'm happy I can finally share my knowledge about running up the ramp. <sighs> for this pace, we will go for the long jump onto the ramp. Make sure to face the ramp perpendicular when long jumping onto it. Don't be too close or it won't work. Hit the ramp once Mario is in his final animation of the long jump, not before. 
When hitting the ramp, start spamming the jump button. You don't have to mash as fast as possible. Doing like 8 to 10 button presses in total is enough. It should not be much more than that or the final jump will be a lot harder. By spamming jump you will maintain your momentum up the ramp. Also try to go up as straight as possible. A diagonal angle won't work. Now for the top, there are multiple ways and everyone has a personal preference for that part, so let's have a look at the common ways of doing it and you can find out what works best for you. First of all, you can try to just time a final single jump at the very top of the ramp. It's the most simple way but has some risks. If you jump too early, you might not get enough height. And if you jump too late, you will grab the wall and lose your cap jump. So you'll fall all the way down again. A slightly modified way is the single jump to the left. When you're around here, start curving to the left, then jump at the top. This way has some advantages over the other method. It's less likely that you jump too early or too late, since you have a bigger window of timing the input. Also, you already start going into the direction you want to move anyways. Then there's the triple jump. It's similar to the first method, but this time you time three presses instead of just one, which makes it quite a lot harder. Initiate the triple around here and try to get the third jump at the top. With this method, you are less likely to be too low after the final jump since it's a triple jump. You gain a lot of height, which makes the movement at the top easier. You can still be too late though, grab the wall and fall down. However, I would not recommend this if you're just starting out as it is quite hard. Take it if you get it, but don't try to force it at the start. Same goes for the final method, the side flip. You keep running up the ramp all the way to the top where you flick the stick around and side flip. This can be a little weird, but compared to the single jump methods, there's less risk of doing it too early. No matter what is the most consistent for you, try to get maximum height out of the final jump by holding the A or B button. Then cap throw, wait for the full spin, dive, cap stall, wall jump, cap throw and dive on top. Turn left, long jump and double jump over the railing. If you're good with spin pounds, you can also try to replace the long jump with one. Cap dive, dive again, jump and ground pound the nut. Now spin pound and drop down to the next nut. Break it with a spin pound or regular ground pound and collect the move. Dive towards the edge and long jump towards the other side. Cap dive, dive and roll boost towards the uproot. Roll cancel and capture it. You might have noticed that the uproot can be quick or slow sometimes. Your mind is not playing tricks on you here. There's a way to at least somewhat consistently get the fast uproot. There are a few ways to make it happen. The best one is to insta capture the uproot and then perform a shake input at the right time. It's a little different for each uproot, so you will need a lot of experience to get it consistent. Do not beat yourself up if you can't get it to work. To instantly capture something, you also have two options. Either get Cappy behind the uproot and let Cappy come back, or, the better option in my opinion, do a roll cancel into the uproot and mash Y and B right afterwards to instantaneously capture the uproot. Walk off its little platform and right once you move off, extend its legs. If you did it correctly, the uproot should get a faster boost if you jump and not stop when landing. Then maneuver your way to the moon and back out of the maze. Long jump from this platform. Cap dive and dive. Roll boost once, triple jump and dive onto the piranha plant. After hitting it, cap throw and dive to the right. Long jump over the gap, center the camera, single jump and run around the corner. Now triple jump close to the edge. To make this work, you can't go for full height jumps, so just tap A or B for the first two jumps. Make your way on top of the nut, face the wall, then jump, ground pound and press X or Y to bonk into the wall once you hit the nut. Now cap dive and dive onto the ramp. Roll boost once, then run around the corner when you land. Double jump, cap dive and dive towards the moon. Ok, flower road skip. You might wonder whether it's necessary for you or what method is the easiest. Here's the thing. The only methods that save time over simply taking the flower road are those that are difficult. So don't feel obligated to learn them. It honestly is not necessary until you start going for the faster route that skips the piranha moon. If you want to risk killing your runs to it though, here are two ways of doing the skip. The classic way is a spin pond roll cancel triple jump. Sounds complex and it also is. Buffer a spin pond, roll and once Mario is off the platform, roll cancel to the left. Then jump towards this corner and triple jump off of it. In order to make this work, you have to keep your momentum from the roll cancel. 
This will only work if you have the right stake angle when roll cancelling. So make sure you understand how to keep your momentum before going for the jump itself. Now just cap dive, throw cappy and dive. For the other method we get rid of the roll cancel. Just dive and triple jump. Try to get the triple as close to this corner as possible. Cap throw, wait for the full spin, dive, rainbow spin, cap throw and dive. This method has less advanced movement but it's harder to make the jump since you have less speed going into it. Make sure to space out the inputs to get maximum distance. Also try to vector both the triple and the cap jump. So don't go straight after getting them but change Mario's direction by 45 degrees like this. When you reach the other side, long jump and triple jump off the higher platform. Cap dive, dive, then jump and dive into the nut to break it. Turn the camera to position like this and jump into the moon. Dive, center the camera and roll boost off the platform. Throw Cappy, dive and roll boost around the higher platform. Time the final boost close to the edge, then cap dive and dive towards the tower entrance. When you get inside, you want to jump, cap throw, dive and cap return jump. Then cap dive and dive on top. After your cap throw, wait a little bit before the dive so you can get full height from the cap bounce. Roll boost twice and roll cancel into the uproot. Yet again, try to get a fast uproot here. This one is more important than the one at the maze. So, as we said earlier, get an instant capture. You will know that you got it when the uproot is a bit in the air when you capture it. Fall onto the platform and shake to extend its legs right when you walk off the platform. You will feel if the uproot is fast or slower at this point. If it's slow, just walk over the switch and the flower road as normal. If it is fast, however, do a jump once walking on the switch. Then do two more jumps on the flower road. You should get a lot of distance from those jumps if you have a fast uproot. Then just break the nut. After breaking it, walk forward and shake right before leaving the alcove. Turn around and release B. Hold towards the moon, then shake and jump with the uproot. At the peak, uncapture and dive into the moon. Then dive and exit the tower. Spin pound, cap dive to the left, cap stall and wall jump. To enter the arena, simply cap throw and dive. A small and not too difficult optimization is skipping that dive. The cutscene will actually also start playing when you just grab onto the railing. So after the wall jump, immediately cap throw towards the arena and you should grab the ledge. Once the screen is black, jump and dive forward. Jump and cap throw to knock off Spirit's head, then land on top of him. Now try to jump onto him as soon as he is vulnerable. For the fast hits in the second and third phase, throw cappy behind Spirit and hold him out. Turn around and backflip the moment Spirit stops hiding under his head. Then release Cappy shortly before you hit him. If you timed everything correctly, Cappy should knock the head off right before you land on Spirit. Repeat the same movement for the third phase, then collect the multi moon by spamming X or Y alongside with A or B and diving once the cap throw comes out. Skip the cutscene and jump and cap throw once possible. Wooded is a long and difficult kingdom. I recommend going for at least a 545 gold. It's worth mentioning though that these strats are definitely good enough for a gold that's better than that, so there is room for mistakes in your gold. If you want to go for a better gold, good for you. You can never practice wooded enough. Once you feel like you're ready for more advanced strats, check out this next part. When the time is right, then you should make a move. Open a the following strats are for a target sum of best of 101 flat, which makes sense to go for if you have a PB of 102 or 103. Wooded will definitely be one of the biggest kingdoms when you're trying to bring your gold from the level of the previous pace to the recommended gold of this one. Some of that improvement will come from cleaner execution and less mistakes, but there are also a lot of new things that you can or should learn. So let's get into this. A small optimization that you probably know about is talking to NPCs by going into first person before initiating the dialogue. For this it is very advisable to change the button that first person is mapped to as it is much faster than pressing in the stick. This is what we are going to use for the wooden shop as it skips the camera movement that would happen. Now while going into first person is easy, there are still a few things that are important in order to save time with it. Sometimes the camera panning will still happen after going into first person. So how do you prevent that from happening? 
When you approach the shopkeeper, make sure the camera is centered behind Mario so he and the robot are both in one line with the camera. The distance you leave between the NPC and Mario when you go into first person is crucial as well, as you don't want to be too close or too far away. You can see an example here, so try to get as close to this as possible and it should work for you too. The angle you approach the robot from can also matter but should normally be fine when you come from the previous move. Also, an alternative to the first person if you really can't figure it out is just turning the camera towards the position it turns to when the dialogue happens. By doing that, you can also have the dialogue appear almost immediately after the A press. After the shot, the strats don't really change for a while. Really try to get confident with the out of bounds movement though, so you can tighten it up as much as possible without taking too much risk of messing up. Now roll boost 3 times and keep holding forward. When Mario starts the running animation, turn left so you hit the ramp perpendicularly and around here. You should now start running up which saves a good amount over the long jump method. After you made it to the top, spin pump to the left and center the camera. Double jump, cap dive and dive. Now keep rolling and buffer a spin. Shortly before you reach the edge, let go of ZL or ZR and instantly jump and ground pound to get an immediate spin pound out of the roll. Spin pound again and try to perform an instant roll cancel. That way you can get more distance and just dive onto the nut. Then you can break it with a spin pound. Instant roll cancels are quite complex and might be new to you if you have never run other categories which use them for roll cancel clips. The concept itself is simple. You ground pound, roll and roll cancel. The hard part is to do both of these tags instantly after one another. To do that you want to make use of both cap throw buttons and one of the jump buttons. Which ones you use is personal preference and heavily depends on the technique you want to go for. Try to roll your thumb from X over to Y and B or from Y over to X and A. So just try to get used to these fast inputs. When you capture the uproot, shake while still being in the air. Don't press B or A while doing so though. The uproot will extend its legs no matter what, you don't have to wait until you land on the ground. To jump, just press the B or A button once. Inside the maze, break the front blocks and then the nut. Try to already jump before grabbing the moon so you collect it while being in the hop animation. Now do one hop down and try to avoid any platforms. Then fall through the hole that you created. Uncapture and dive to the right before the uproot even hits the ground. To exit the maze there are two options. For the easier way you want to dive over this part of the maze then just turn left and long jump out. Be careful to not hit the left wall as it sticks further out than it looks. Afterwards, just cap dive and dive to the other side. The more difficult version I wouldn't really recommend for this pace, but as we already learned about instant roll cancels, it doesn't hurt mentioning it here. Then you can decide for yourself whether you want to implement it now or later. Try to dive onto this part and buffer a spin pound. Hold down on the analog stick so you can start rolling forward when you land. Then instantly roll cancel to the left and out of the maze. Now shake once so Cappy homes in and comes back as soon as possible. Otherwise you won't be high enough to make it to the other side. Remember to only time one shake as rapidly shaking will give you a motion control cap throw once Cappy is back. Getting a spin throw, up throw or down throw there will kill your run. So one shake and then button press cap throw, dive onto Cappy and dive over the railing. If you don't have enough distance add in another cap throw. This roll cancel method is a little risky and weird to do, so don't worry if you're not comfortable doing it in runs yet. On the other side, roll boost twice and triple jump. The poison here is a little weird, so you can actually jump on it. This will only work on some parts though and only with a first frame jump. So try to jump around here and try to buffer the jump. The best way of doing this is timing a single A or B press very shortly before you hit the ground. Let's look at a small change for crumbling nut now. Instead of diving into it, try to land right before it and do a quick spin pound. This is a little faster than the bonk method since you can collect the moon earlier. There isn't anything I would change for the tower from the last pace, so let's skip ahead. Coming out of it, I would recommend going for Spew Atlas now. It replaces the fight with all of its auto scrolly parts and cutscenes with 3 quick moons. If done well, that saves a few seconds and at this point your movement should easily be good enough to gain some time with it. Spin pound roll in this direction, then spin your stick again so you can spin jump again. Spin pound on this part and roll off of it in this direction. 
center the camera and start vectoring towards either the robot or Talkatu. You want to bounce on them so you don't get stunned. Talkatu is the faster choice but also harder to hit. Triple jump, single jump, cap dive and dive. Be careful to not drop any inputs here. That can happen when Cappy hits the ball and will send you straight into the boots and to the file menu. Triple jump again, wall jump and throw Cappy. Dive towards him and vault to the end below the nut. To break it efficiently, cap stall against the wall to hit it once, then wall jump and cap throw again. For these final two inputs, you can wall your thumb from A to X or B to Y to tighten up stuff as much as possible. After the moon, cap throw and dive, then roll boost once. Buffer a spin pound and roll in this direction. This part is really scary because you can fall into deep woods again if you mess something up. Also, the uproot can easily get in your way if the direction of your spin pound is off by a bit. A safer but also slower alternative is just jumping and diving. Another alternative would be roll boosting twice and roll cancelling right when you would leave the platform. This can be very scary, but then you don't need to deal with the uproots and it's also pretty fast. Decide for yourself what you want to do. Roll boost towards here and drop into the water. Hold neutral until you're below the surface, then hold towards the pipe until you enter it. Alright, flooding pipeway is really important. It's entirely cycle based and if you mess up, you will lose multiple seconds. That sucks and also means that fighting Stuart would have been faster. So really practice this sub area until you are consistent to ensure you save time with this route. Just as a note here, as long as you get the cycle, your movement doesn't matter. This will just be the movement I would recommend. Roll, long jump and keep holding right to swim on the water surface. Once you are high enough, jump against this wall, wall jump and dive. Jump, round pond jump, cap stall against the left wall, wall jump, dive, roll boost and long jump into the moon. Cap throw and dive, then jump and drop down. Now here is where the tight stuff begins. Keep holding right to swim on the surface. Be careful to avoid the fuzzies to the top here. Once you're below the fuzzy, do a cap throw to swim faster on the surface of the water. Now wait here until the water is halfway between these two parts. Then jump, cap throw to the right, wait for Mario to do the full spin, then dive. Hold to the right, wall jump, cap throw to the right, dive and collect the moon. If you timed everything correctly, you should successfully have avoided all of the fuzzies. Getting the cycle isn't easy and requires a lot of practice to get consistent at. So take your time here until you are confident in what you are doing. Now just warp to the Odyssey and do a spin throw to globe. I would recommend trying to get at least a 520 with these strats. If you want to push for more, here are some more optimizations. Hurry up quick, El Hefe's coming soon. Sit up straight when she enters the room. As a runner with a 100 or 101 who aims for a SOB of 59 flat, you're probably looking for ways to improve one of the most difficult splits. Let's bring your gold closer to that 5 minute mark. As always, make sure you know about everything we went over in the video so far. Now let's learn some new things. First of all, we are going to go for tree route now. After shop, turn the camera downwards. This is important to make the uproot spawn earlier so you can instantly capture it. Spin pound, roll boost twice, then to two small hops into a triple jump. Cap dive towards the wall and wall jump. Then cap throw and dive towards this spot. This will set you up to get an easier show run bounce after the spin pound. Make sure to hold neutral during the bounce so you're not too close to the wall. Then cap throw, dive and roll boost towards the uproot. It should either spawn or already walk around if you did the camera manipulation correctly. Once you reach it, do a roll cancel into the uproot. Spam Y and B again and try to get an insta capture. The uproot should be in the air when you capture it if you did it correctly. If that is the case, shake before you can even move. Don't hold B though, the uproot should extend its legs while still being in the air. Its legs will move towards the floor while its head will slowly move a little up. Once its legs hit the ground, press B to get a jump in the air. Try to land around this spot right in this little dip in the ground. If you did it correctly, you should now have a fast uproot. Do one more normal boost on the ground and you should be close enough to the tree to make it up. If you didn't get it, you might need to take it a little slower. Try to still get it with the same amount of jumps and don't do any extra. 
In that case, it's better to walk. Looking back at the initial capture, there is another way to get fast uproot. So let's have a look at that as well. Land on the little platform it spawns on and right when walking off, do a small hop. If you get a far boost, immediately follow up with another boost and try to keep momentum. If you don't get a fast boost, just walk close enough to the tree and then make your way up. When climbing the tree, make sure to always shake instantly and jump up to the next platform as early as possible. It can happen that you will be stuck in the full length lag animation for a short time. That happens if you shake a little too early before you're even on the ground. So try to make sure that doesn't happen as it loses quite a bit of time. It's not necessary to extend the legs entirely. Break the nut and collect the moon. Now, without jumping with the uproot, uncapture to the left and once possible dive towards the entrance. Roll boost until you're in the water, then triple jump and dive. When doing nut clip, try to take as little time as possible to get into the right position to perform it. Some runners can save a lot of time just from a faster setup. Same goes for all of the out of bounds movement. As I already mentioned before, get confident with everything so you spend as little time as possible with unnecessary safety movement. One important part is the Shorane bounce. To be able to do it instantly, land either here or here. Also, try to instantly cap throw and dive after doing the wall jump. That way, you don't have to wall slide to be low enough. For ramp, try to go for the triple jump at the top now. You will save time from getting more height and if you're really high, you can even skip the wall jump. That can be pretty tight though. Just try to get used to the triple for now and you will have an easier time to implement wall jump less one day. Another thing that helps to get used to wall jump less is this. Spin pound, then roll boost twice and close to the left railing. Then RCJ into it to get a cap return jump. To get it, it's important to delay the jump a lot, so Cappy has time to come back. Afterwards, dive and do a roll into a spin pound like before. There is some other movement that's slightly faster than all of this. Spin pound, then triple jump off the railing. Landing on top of it is quite precise, so make sure you get a feeling for when to do the single and double jump. For the triple, just tap the jump button so you don't go too far. Same for the single jump afterwards. Buffer a spin and destroy the nut. We already looked at the roll cancel out of the maze and at this level the time is definitely right to start going for it. It's not as bad as it may look or feel at first and it saves a lot over any alternative. Now roll boost twice and do a triple jump. Afterwards continue with the movement like before. When diving onto the ramp try to get two roll boosts. Then keep your momentum when running around the corner and double jump close to the edge. If you lost your momentum, just long jump and do a single jump. Cap throw and dive towards here, then long jump off the railing and towards the corner on the other side. Do two small hops and a triple jump. Vector to the left, cap dive, cap throw and dive to the other side. If you get enough distance, you can also skip the final cap throw, but you have to make sure all the inputs are spaced correctly. So only risk that if you're comfortable in doing so. Next, we are going to have a look at a new technique that we haven't used in this tutorial series so far. A roll cancel bounce, or short RCB. It happens by doing an RCJ right onto Cappy. This is useful to get a lot of vertical speed when bridging gaps. If possible, this is a faster alternative to a regular camp bounce. And this is also useful for going towards the tower entrance. You roll cancel bounce, vector towards the entrance and keep all of your momentum from the roll cancel while still making it all the way to the other side. RCBs are quite similar to roll cancel triple jumps which were explained in sand. You do an RCJ and then hold Cappy out afterwards. The big difference is that you do the RCJ in the same direction as the roll cancel went. So if you roll cancel to the right, you keep holding that direction and jump. It's important that you don't change your stick angle and that both of these actions are as close to one another as possible. Also, try to do a small hop as the jump, as big jumps will easily overshoot. This tech can take a while to get used to, but once you're consistent at it, you can start doing it here. Roll boost two or three times, then do the RCB in this area. Afterwards, back to the left and try to land on the platform. Then turn left and jump into the tower. 
If you don't quite make it, just add another dive. There aren't any changes for the tower inside, but let's have a look at Spiritless again. Since this route replaces the Story Moon from the Piranha with the Tree Moon, we don't have a choice now to fight Spirit. Also, definitely try to bounce on Talker 2 and not the robot now. Here, we are now going to do an up throw before the dive. Then instantly shake to get a cap return jump. The rest remains the same. With all of this, a goal of 507 is reasonable. If you want to go for one of the coolest IL minutes barriers, stick around. We are going to look at the final steps towards a sub 5 now. I'm human, I know when I fuck up, I'm feeling defined. Salt in my wound, feel the burns from the tears that I'm crying. I'm now for the final pace, which is for people with a sub hour PB who want to push for a sum of best of 58 flat. If you're trying to bring your goal down by another few seconds, it's a lot about tightening stuff up whenever possible. In a long and technical kingdom like Wooded, that will add up more than you might think. But there are still a few more optimizations we are going to look at. First of all, this Shurana bounce. There's not much to explain here. Just like for most Shurana bounces, it's about getting a feeling for your distance to the wall. So the best advice I can give you is try to practice it for a bit and see if it could be a strat for you. If not, don't worry, it won't be necessary to reach our target goal here. I feel like I already said this once or twice this video, but yet again. Tighten up all setups and inputs regarding nut clip and the out of bounds movement as much as possible. You might want to take a look at some of the best players and time how fast they do it compared to you. Keep practicing until you get decently close to it and you will probably save a fair bit over your current out of bounds. Also, there is the long jump method to collect the moon out of bounds. It looks tempting, but I personally think it's too risky and precise to teach here. You can still try if you feel different about it, but I wouldn't recommend going for it in runs. For the ramp, definitely get consistent with the triple jump method and also try to remove the wall jump as often as possible without risking to kill your run. If you have enough height, dive onto the railing, do a roll boost and then another one after falling down. Then roll cancel to the left and delay the RCJ so you get a cap return jump. Now dive, roll and spin pump. Next strat is another one that's worth a shot but not required. After diving here, roll boost twice, then do an RCJ and a triple jump. Then do two small hops and a triple off the railing. Cap dive very close to the wall and center the camera. If you're too far away from the wall, you will have some problems with the camera not turning correctly. Cap throw, dive and do another triple jump on the ramp. The triple jump is a little counterintuitive because you would expect to do all the jumps as quickly as possible when landing on a ramp. However, that is not the case. Especially the first jump needs to be delayed a lot. Definitely don't jump too early or you will get launched to the left and not get your cap jump back. After the triple, buffer a spin pump. To cancel it, do an up throw immediately after breaking the nut. This way of destroying the nut is something that you can also implement when not going for the triple jump beforehand. The inputs are tighter with the more basic movement towards the nut, but it should be manageable for you. After flower road skip, do a roll boost and then an RCJ into the triple jump. To make sure you don't get a cap return jump instead of the triple, either do an up throw roll cancel so KP comes back in time, or hold him out when doing a regular RCJ. For crumbling nuts, there is another minor optimization. Once you land, try to jump and dive onto the higher platform as soon as possible. Then jump onto the nut and break it with a spin pump. This way you don't have to delay the spin pump at all. For spiritless, try to go for the stump cancel jump. There's not too much to explain here, but for maximum time save try to get a super far vector. I would suggest doing a timed button press for the stun jump, because then you have more control about your following jumps. Try to do the double jump in a way so you land on the higher platform and then do the triple on here. Then continue with the movement from the previous pace. Breaking the nut can also be optimized a little bit. Do the cap return jump after the wall jump and move below the nuts, but not right next to the wall. Throw Cappy up to the right of the nut so Cappy gets above it. When Cappy tries to come back to Mario, he should hit the nut twice or even three times. Then you can just grab the moon with either having to hit the nut one more time or just diving into the already spawned moon. That's all the changes I have for you, but to follow our tradition, let's go through the route again and look at all kind of invisible time save we can find. Do you keep full speed when grabbing the rock and maneuvering with it? 
Do you get fast nut boy in all three places where you capture an uproot? Climbing the tree, do you cut the jumps closely? Do you do nut clip instantly without wasting time positioning yourself beforehand? Do you have a fast out of bounds movement? Do you run onto the ramp as early as possible? Inside the maze, do you go through this gap as soon as possible and then do an instant hop to get below the breakable blocks? Do you cut the remaining jumps closely and jump before collecting the moon? Do you uncapture even before landing? Do you get maximum speed out of this roll cancel? For that you want to roll cancel in a 90 degree angle or even a bit more than that. Do you triple on the far right of the fence and then dive onto the ramp once possible? Do you do small jumps to get to the nut? That way you don't have to hold back. Do you do this RCB as early as possible while still making it to the tower entrance without diving? Do you break the nut and grab the moon close to the camera so you can leave the niche quickly? Do you delay this spin pump only as much as it's necessary? Do you get a very far vector and cut this corner closely? Do you do the final roll boost around here? If you do it closer to the edge, you land on the water surface later. Do you enter the pipe on the highest point? Do you tighten up the final part of flooding pipe where as much as possible? Do you zoom out of the map entirely and spin through to globe? Other than paying attention to all of these questions, make sure you take straight lines and grab moons as low as possible. Then you can start grinding towards the infamous sub 5 barrier. A goal like that is what I would recommend for our SOB goal. Alright, that was a monster episode. Therefore, we are very thankful for your support. Eden, who checked the script for mistakes, asked me to ask for likes. Flavian, who decided on strats and recorded clips, shared with me that he wants you to share the video. Lupus, who wrote the script and did the editing, begged me to beg for your subscription. And myself, who helped with most parts and reading the silly script like I'm being held hostage by my co-workers. So, like the video, share it and drop us up please. I'm Danster and I'm gonna kill some more runs to Wooded Ramp now. See you next time for Change of Pace for Cloud.